Welcome, welcome. Hi, Mike. Wait. Hello. Hello. How are you? Can you hear me? <laughs> I'm good. I can hear you fine. Perfect. You know what? I'm going to need to mute. What? There you go. Always technical All difficulties right. when we start, right? <laughs> good times. Good times, good times. Welcome, welcome to another episode of Tea Time with Unfold <laughs> featuring the one and only, the man, the legend who also happens to be the co-founder of the Creative South Conference and the co-owner of the Columbus Rapids, <laughs> but most importantly, <laughs> Unfold really <the> brand <laughs> designer, Mike Jones. Oh, man. Hi, Mike. That's funny. Hey, how's it going? Good, good. That was a great you? intro. I'm good. I'm good. Thank Getting you. it done. You know? you know how we do on a Friday? Yeah. Yeah. That's, uh, that intro was something else. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get those guys for that, but um, I, I, thank you for doing that. That was hilarious. Of course, of course. Also, brought to you by Yellow Soda. I love it. Well, you know, this is just for you. Hello, gorgeous. Hi, Mike. I'm having my own tea as well, and I hope everybody who is awesome. watching is also enjoying a cup of tea, a cup of coffee. It's Friday. We're here, we're chilling, we're having a great time, and Mike is going to talk us through what he's going to be working on today. Mike? For sure. Awesome. So I figured today we would talk about, uh, you know, sketching, how I sketch through my ideas, why it's important, kind of mock up a little sketch of a badge or something, and then see how far we can get in kind of getting it to final completion. I, I don't know how far we'll get, but we'll definitely get through the sketch part of it. So I'm just going to kind of take us through that and I kind of had an idea of something I wanted to work on today for a friend so that's what I'm gonna do so I don't know uh can they see what I'm doing right now can they see my yes, screen yes they can absolutely awesome so I'm on my iPad um you know I I don't know if you guys can see me too but I have I think keeping a sketchbook by your desk is super important like I have probably 50 plus of these that are full and so I keep one with me everywhere I go or, you know, even if it's just a field note or something, you know, keep it with you. Um, jot, the, jot those ideas down and and really take time to plan out what you're trying to build. And I know a lot of people have different ways to do that. I prefer pen and paper, and I'm just now getting into I, iPad with Procreate, and, and I'm really enjoying that a lot, too. So today I'm just going to be in my iPad. We're going to sketch out a little badge that I'm um, thinking of for uh, one of our coworkers uh, who, hum who who likes the humble chocolate chip 
So Gabe, I'm talking about you. And so we're going to do a spin on Gabe's cookie company and just, I don't know, have some fun with it. So if you guys have any ideas or you're like, oh, try this, try that, you know, like I'm all ears. Uh, I'm I'm going to do it my way and we'll see what happens. So I like to, I like to kind of sometimes sketch in reverse, like sketch white on dark color, because I like to be able to tell where my shadows are going to go when I'm planning out typography and stuff. So I'm just going to pick uh, a color for the background and and um, get that get that good to go. You know what? Maybe we'll just go a little uh, a nice dark purple color and uh, see where that takes us. And then um, I will get uh, just a white color. I pick. I like the peppermint pencil in in um, Procreate. I just like the way it sketches. So that's kind of where I'm going to go. And I want to do this kind of have this kind of a little bit of a vintage vibe. So we're going to explore some vintage shapes and I don't know, just start drawing letters. So y'all good with that? That sounds great. Can you hear me, yeah. Mike? Can everybody yeah. hear me? Um, I can hear you fine. Okay. I played around with some of the mic settings. Sorry, we're having some technical difficulties. As, oh, you're good. As can everyone always. hear me? You're crisp and, my loud and voice. Cr clear. So as long as people can hear you, that's the most important thing. So um no, but, i don't know about that but yep it works it sounds like it's way better now so let's get started awesome so here we go i'm just gonna you know i i start kind of like you know uh, caves i'm glad you're wearing that hat mike because now people can see you as well okay. yeah uh, good yeah and so this is this 11 i know this is off topic but this the unfold colorway for my uh hat collection i had to get it because it was unfold colors and i think it looks sharp so Gabe's Cookie Co. Uh, when when was Gabe born? Let's just guess. Let's say you know, two thousand and ten. So we'll make we'll make it a young company. He knows okay. I'm busting his chops today just for fun. But here we go. Um, you can do it a couple of ways in here. Uh, you can use their calligraphy brushes. They have some good ones like Shell. It's one I usually use when I'm doing type because it automatically will draw it out. But I'm thinking of something like you know like I, I really am starting to dig this this g vibe when i'm drawing g's or uppercase i don't know why but i i like the way it feels and uh you know you can do it several different b's this is all just kind of planning out like what you want the letter forms to look like i usually do this once or twice and to kind of get where i'm want to go and then um i'll come back uh, so, you know, like that's rough. It, it's all right. I'm not a huge fan of it, but I'll add another layer and uh, let's. So, uh, Mike, real quick, what was the product, the the got? app that you're using to do this? This is this is Procreate on the iPad. And then, are these brushes that you created yourself? Nope, these are brushes that come with uh come with it. I, come I with just it. like to use the ones they they uh they give us. Perfect. I have one on here that uh, I use for illustrating like character form, like characters for. Uh, you know, teams and whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, but I did buy it and I, it's an awesome brush uh, by Enox. Uh, if you want to go grab it, but uh, this, these are just brushes that come with it. So uh, I love that. So then this route. people can actually do this as yeah. soon as they get in procreate. That's awesome. That's right. All right, here we go. So let's just do this. Like I wanted to kind of have this vibe, like kind of follow this path. So uh, let's just get in here and really uh, start getting the letter forms like we like. So like I said, I'm kind of digging on this G, this G style for some reason right now. Um, hey, if it looks shaky, it is. I'm drawing live on TV, y'all. This is crazy. And just to be clear, you haven't done this yet. Like you're actually designing. Oh no, no, we're right now. This isn't uh, like an uh, easy bake oven. Ding, it's ready to go. Like no, nice. I'm just. This is. I'm winging this whole thing, and we're just gonna have some fun with it, and and see what happens. Um, B is such a tricky letter form in cursive, right? Because technically, it's supposed to be like up and back out like that, right? Like that's a that looks like a B to me, but some people could not like that version. So. If you don't like that version, you could always come like this. You could take this this B and bring it up like that and maybe back through mm -hmm. itself. There's that version too. Ooh, I like that, that version. Work. Yep. 
um, that gives a little bit more character, but uh, let's just uh, try to get through all of them. Let me let you know what people are saying in the chat. They're saying, step one, uh -oh. be naturally and freakishly talented. That's exactly what's That's happening. That's so <laughs> not, not right. This is just... Uh, just quit. Just just be loose with it. I, that's what I tell people that are trying to like get it. Like, how do you sketch? How do you know? Be loose. You see how none of this is really re refined. I don't need it to be refined because what I'm trying to do is get my idea out on paper. Like vectors will get this refined for you. So you don't have to have it perfect the way you want it. Um, you know, get it close and and then come back on another layer and overlay that and keep going until you get it like you want it. Um I don't know how, how else to say it. Like, yeah, you know, getting your, getting your sketch pad every day. If you want to get better at something, um, you know, do a sketch challenge, do a daily sketch challenge. Uh, I got a buddy right now that's working on through that and his progress is ridiculous. Wow. Um, it's night and day of where he was and where he is now. And it's amazing to watch the progress. I love um, the ABC, ABCD, like alphabet challenge um, when they do it for, you know, 30 days uh, back to back where yeah. they're experimenting, uh, drawing this, you know, the letters of the alphabet in different either typefaces or fonts, or maybe they're creating their own typeface, which is pretty cool. That's a good idea, too. Oh, definitely. I had that arch really, really high. So I'm just turning it. I'm just taking this to I'm selecting it, turning it down. So it's not so so much of a, a high raise because that'll make for a much bigger. uh final mark you don't want it super super tall but you know we might turn this into some kind of um label for the cookie packaging or uh, you know put it on the apron or put it on i don't know hats or mm -hmm. boxes for the cookies whatever you know all i know is uh when this hits the market y'all this is the best chocolate chip cookie you'll ever eat in your life so just know that ahead of time that that's what gave Gabe makes that kind of cookie and he wants you all to know it. And he said he would share the recipe at the end Aww. of this, at the end of this thing. <laughs> I hope he's watching this. He's absolutely watching um, this. Mike. Okay, good. I just wanted to mess with him so bad. I love all it. All right. So my thought is like, you know, there's several things you can do. Do we want the S to come out, you know, up high? Do we want it to come out low? Do we want it to just come out of here? You, there's so many ways you can make that S do something at the end or none of those things, right? You can just have, none of it i love how but i think the b go I ahead I, I love how the g looks like a capital g and a small g all in one did you do that on that's purpose why i love that g form so it much yeah, yeah it's just it so it's good. dope mm -hmm. um and i think you could bring this you could come back with this b and and really take it like over here if you wanted and e almost to where they could this could be connected if that makes sense. Oh, wow. I might not yeah. overlap it like that, but you could bring that flourish back on itself. Um, I don't know if that's necessary, but I like that. I kind of like it. And then over here, you would do something like, you know, um, uh, some just some regular type stuff. Maybe do it like, I don't know, something like this, you know, to kind of bring that all together. Uh, and I'm sure I'll race that 10 million times over before I'm done with it. But I uh, also like, uh, I like letters like for, if I'm doing older type badges or older type, um, like vintage look and stuff. I love this, this style of lettering, um, to where you can have just a little bit of hint of some character. Uh, so maybe a font like that. We, if we find a good one, that's in a time period that makes sense. There's no real set one. I know we put 2010. That was just a mess with him. That probably is not <laughs> for real. It'll probably be like 1954 on here or something, but it's a cookie company. So let's add all the, the things that could make it a cookie company. And um, when you're building this out and I'll get into this in Figma, you want to build out all these letters individually. So you can mess with the kerning, which is the letter spacing in between each letter and <coughs> excuse me, and kind of like really get it like you want it. My thought is like, if it was just a, you know, if it's Gabe's cookies, they're, they're delicious and they're chocolatey and they're, you know, made with love. 
I love that. Uh, Benjamin Button. So he, uh, Gabe went from being born in 2010 to 1950 something. So he's just getting younger. Whatever, (laughs) whatever works for him, you know, like all, all the things. Um, I'm trying to, I don't have a picture in front of me right this second, but I want to, he's got an icon on his profile. That's like, I'm going to do, I'm going to butcher this, but it's very close to like this kind of vibe. I don't know if you've seen it or not. That's for his icon for his avatar. And it's like on his social media or in, yeah. And on, 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 uh, Slack and, in Slack, uh, I'm seeing his his uh, yeah. beautiful illustration. That's the one I'm talking about. Oh, no, 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 no. This is his icon he used to have for his... Uh... Anyway, that yeah. just looks like no, looks great. Chunky Gabe. I don't know. Maybe we won't use his face on the cookie, but it was still funny to draw it. So let's not do that and say we did and, and just take that and put that in the archive because I will bring that out some other time. But I, like I do it. think that... It, it is funny, but I think that for this particular instance, we probably should just do something that was more like uh, maybe this with like, I don't know, maybe some bite marks out of it. Um, you know, uh, something like that. And just, oh, that's not the right, that's not the right brush. I was looking for that eraser and started smearing things around um how long anyway just you, get a loose concept how long have yeah, you been ahead. drawing letters mike because you know i can put together a couple of typefaces together but you drew that like you drew that f- just um, from memory I, yeah i don't i don't know um, a couple years i've been designing for 22 year 22 years wow um so yeah, I, I, I but I, I practice, like I said, I keep my sketchbook with me every day because I want to keep the ideas fresh when I'm out and about, but I also want to have a place to practice. So, so uh, what, what, what are I'm the, doing. some, what, what are some of the things that you're problem solving in the sketch phase while you're, while you're designing this? Um, for, uh, for the most part, like all the letter forms. Right. So like I could redraw and redraw. I'm happy with this right now, but I would I, could, I would probably redraw the B a couple of times. I will do another version of this where I would stack like in a real world setting. I would stack a couple of times and I would redraw the letters individually on separate layers and then start moving them around. I would get this about as about 95 percent ready to go to like almost to completion, like full solid, in, you know, like colored all in nice, solid, real, real clean. And then I would take that over to Figma and use that as my base layer to draw on top of. And I'm not doing all that today, but because of time, but uh, that's what I'm solving for there is like spacing, letter shape, letter form, all that. And then on this particular phase, I would be doing um, composition. So I would try this in several things. So I'm on a different layer. I'm just going to go, okay, uh, well, let me do this real quick. Cause make mm-hmm. it a little quicker for me too. You can come over here to, um, Canvas, turn on your drawing guide, edit the drawing guide, uh, throw on symmetry, open the symmetry options, and then make it uh, a quadrant. So you got four, and then um, hit done. Actually, when you're in there, uh, up here on the color bar at the top, you can pick the color of the line. Mm -hmm. It'll let me, uh, well, it's good for me, but you can change that color to see it a little better. Let me go back to that one second. There you go. Yeah, see how it changes the color of the line to, mm-hmm. to be able to see it a little differently. And so then I want to center, basically center it kind of where I think the center is, should be on that mark. And then I hit done. And so then now when I go to draw on this layer, um, it's going to, it's basically going to do it for me, right? Mm-hmm. I don't have to do one, one stroke. So now I can kind of really get in here and make, the vintage shape that I want to make and not worry about is, you know, is it wonky on one side? Is it messed up? Um, Does it look right? Uh, And I like this shape for this because it's got a a couple of places to put little, what I like to call those, those um, badge extras that everybody does, you know, the trademarking and the the sense 18, whatever. And 
all those little accoutrements that make badges feel full <laughs> that are not always necessary, but kind of trend, I guess, if, if we're being honest. Um, so no matter where I color on any of these quadrants, it's going to add that to every uh, you know, all four. And so what I would probably do is do a few different versions of this. So like that's one layer. I'm going to go ahead and add, turn it off and add another one and um, make sure that that drawing guide is also there. Uh, let's just do done. It should work again. Yep. Yeah, okay. And so then I thought about, well, what if, what's another cool like vintage shape? Uh, I, I think quadrifoil is a is a cool vintage shape and if you guys don't know that it's it's like um i draw it right oh yeah the, yes this is a quadruple yeah so you know i um, love that shape i think this is yeah. perfect shape for gabe uh, you think it's the perfect shape for gabe it's perfect um i feel like it's the perfect shape for great gabe's grandma but <laughs> exactly like, I, we I don't just, know how, we just how, how vintage we're going but maybe <laughs> this was his grandma's recipe that he's yeah. going to share with us today and not his own i don't know but um i heard she was an amazing cook um uh with taco he likes tacos so i almost did a taco cookie combo like i was trying to figure out how to make that happen in my head but it wasn't uh it wasn't working perfectly although if when we get to the next phase of this which is like adding little things i think we could we could do a taco cookie type uh mascot battle situation mm -hmm. uh which could be kind of fun it'd at least be fun to sketch out so you know get your shape like you want i feel like you know that's that's could be close uh, to something else we could use and, you know, you'd get it nice and centered up where it should be, uh, with the, the typography. And so that's the version. So, you know, you got this version and the other one. And so now that I've got these two layers in here, um, I like to duplicate stuff just to make sure I'm not, uh, messing up things that I might need to go back to. So I duplicate mm -hmm. those layers. And then the one that you have, that's extra, you can come in here with the eraser and now you can go you know, make sure you turn your uh, your drawing guide off. So you got to go back into edit guide uh, to symmetry and options and turn off assisted drawing. Otherwise, you're going to be you're still going to be doing even if you're racing, you're going to be racing in all four quadrants. And I, I, that just happens to me by doing it and messing up, <laughs> if that makes sense. Um, so uh, I turned the drawing guide off because I really don't need it. But if you want to leave it on, it doesn't affect you now that the assisted is turned off but it's still there. So I would come back in here and start, you know, getting rid of the pieces that you don't really need in the, in the thing. So, you know, this isn't working. This could be a cool overlay. Um, so because that cookie bit is in there, I go back to that layer with the typography and I would probably just move this to its own layer. So oh, I just okay. I highlighted yeah. it, copied and pasted it, put it on its own layer. And then I'm going to erase it from the original. So, I can make sure that it 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 fits. Let me turn that one off. Sorry, that it fits where it needs to fit. And while I'm in here, I'll probably go ahead and start cleaning some of this stuff up. Um, you know, uh, getting rid of some of my sketch lines and and whatnot. Um, and are you? Um you're uh are you using an apple pencil for this i am i am using the latest version of the apple pencil yep nice um yeah um and then you know i i like the way this kind of feels so i probably would start really trying to uh, come back to the letters and and locking them in uh and then same with same with stuff like uh Sorry, my brain doesn't know what to call stuff when it needs to call it stuff. So You're I'm good. just a lot of us right this second. Oh, this I probably would do good. this and I would probably go ahead and give the um, outline some some shadows. So I took it off right there and it can I let it connect to this side of the G uh, right here. 
I mean, you know, that would be the same color. If this was all white, you mm -hmm. know, like those would touch. But I would take my eraser tool and I would probably start taking shadows out of the, of the um, outline. There you go. So like right here, I'd probably shadow right there. And I would probably come over here to this one and just give it some more. If it was a one color, because that gives it a little more depth. Maybe do it on both sides just for fun to give it a little more shadow on both sides. Around and the cookie, right? Mm -hmm. Around the cookie, yeah. It just depends. Like, this is the part where you can you can start hammering out some of those little details. Mm -hmm. And and the reason, you know, I know there's like, oh, we can just go and do all this in Figma, uh, you know, or Illustrator or whatever you're doing. A hundred percent. If that's how you work, do that. Go do that kind of work. That's that's your business. You know, like, that's your process. And your process is works for you. Make it work for you. For me, and as old school as I am, I like stuff really planned out and thought through and and done with some intention of like why did you do that and why is that there and that sort of thing so the reason i do it like this is because when i take this into um into figma mm -hmm. there's no guesswork i just got to go build it so it's a time saver i've already done all the heavy lifting and i could do very i could do way more iterations of something like this with a heavy hand letter type build on paper or, or digitally on an iPad faster than I can do it, having to build several iterations in vector and then have to move them and mess with them. That's me. I'm not saying other people aren't faster and can't do it that way. And that's great if you can. I'm just saying for me, this works. And I, I appreciate the approach to like, it's a hand built thing. And so because it's hand built, I want to be able to keep that going a little longer to make it like I want it. So Mike, I, uh... then when I, yeah, go ahead. No, I was just going to ask some questions about like your process. So yeah, please, please you do. start in Procreate and then you take it to Figma. When did you make that transition? Were you doing it in Illustrator before or Photoshop oh, before? Yeah. Or, and how did oh, you make that Photoshop. transition? Okay. Can you talk uh, us through yeah. that a little bit? For sure. For sure. I, uh, I made that transition this year. I've been in Figma, I don't know, eight months now. Okay. And it's uh it took some getting used to but i'm getting the hang of it and I, I appreciate it for what it is now it's it's very very uh it's it's simplified to the point of what you need and it works and i and the fact that it's still vector and the pen tool is the same and it you know you just got to get the hang of some different hotkeys the transition wasn't bad once i got the hang of it uh it's just the speed of it you know you gotta gotta train a mind that's like for my for me i've been using the illustrator for 20 years so my hotkeys in my head are second nature i don't even have to do anything think about it. i just know that okay this does this mm -hmm. and then you get into a new software that is just it, it the tool does what you need it to you just got to figure out how to make the hotkeys work for you and get them memorized and then once you do that it starts to be point you know a lot faster what i love about it is that i can get up with gabe i can get it with um, our whole team dennis you know daniel joy all of us uh you know moss we just get in there nick i don't want to leave anybody out get everybody in there. I mean, Vic and... said that he trained you in Figma and I haven't heard you mention him. So <laughs> yeah, you know, you know how we do that. So many people have answered so many questions at so, so much, but like, um, I've gotten a lot of help, but it's, it's what I love about it is all the stuff that's, it, it's almost like it knows what you're thinking and it's like, Oh yeah, you, you need to snap this to here and it's automatic center. And it's all things that would, you have to, really think about and do in illustrator as far as like grouping and, and centering and like arranging it kind of does that for you in a better way and so i appreciate that a lot more um if that makes any sense yes it does no absolutely and so i haven't I mean, been using it very long but i i know it enough to you know if i need to build something i can build it and uh, i've been able to do some really cool things this year so far with some cool uh, clients and uh I'm excited to be in there and I can't thank our brand team enough for kind of taking a, uh, uh, the, uh, seasoned <laughs> person. We're so lucky and, to have you, Mike. Like, Come on. You know, don't, oh, don't, I don't know. I don't know. Don't but be like, humble you know, on this but stream. They, Come on. No, 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 no. I'm just saying like, it, it means a lot that, you know, they had patience with me is what I'm saying. And it, it was appreciated. I mean, uh, the Figma tool, the Figma has only been around like five six years so 
we're all new technically to Figma. You know, I've been doing it for about two and a half years now. I've switched from ske Sketch to Figma. Our whole team, that's the one thing that I loved. And now this is turning into a promotional episode for Figma. Um, but I love how collaborative <laughs> our team is, yes. you know, so it allows us to yeah. not just like work remotely, which is that's been a signature of our company, but also um, our coll collaboration is also another signature of working at Unfold. So it allows us to to be in the same file together, work together. Uh, brainstorm ideas so does I, i've never felt like i'm working on a project in silo by myself that's that's why nope. i think it's been great even when you want to right? you don't do that <laughs> yeah because yeah. you have access to all this talent and one of the things that kind of um uh was interesting to me is that we do everything in Figma. So not just product design, but we do illustration, we do logo design, branding, all of that in Figma. So we don't have to yeah, uh, nuts. you know, switch between four different tools and, and have those different tools kind of work together. Um, we, we've been lucky that that's worked out for, for us. So we're grateful to, to have Figma as our main tool. <laughs> And I love seeing how fast oh, yeah. you adapted. You adapted so quickly to to the tool, and as seasoned as as you say you are, you you're a quick learner. And I can't wait to see um, if you're able to. We have we have enough time, Mike, to to jump into Figma and kind of like yeah. work a little bit in there. Yeah, we have. Sure, we have I'm our, on. I'm uh, almost to that point. Perfect. We we have like 25 more minutes, so that's awesome. If anybody has any questions in the chat for Mike and they want to know a little bit about him, his process. Uh, right now, Please. it looks like you're refining the, the. It's starting to look like a real logo. I mean, uh, going in there yeah. and like it's getting there. It's yeah. getting there. Yeah. If anybody has any questions, please. I hate talking. So. Uh, no, don't say what. How can you hate yeah, talking? Like, I, you host I, I, the I don't whole mind conference. answering questions. <laughs> it's a necessity. Oh, I, I like on. answering the questions. I'm not a fan of like just chattering. My I don't like to hear myself talk. How about that? Oh my goodness. Well, okay. So uh, talk to me about the feelings that you wanted this um, logo to portray. You know, what are some of the feelings? Sure. Like we talk about that when, when it comes to branding, right? Yep. I, I, I wanted it to have a vintage vibe, mm -hmm. right? Like it had been passed, like, a, you know, the recipe had been passed down from generation to generation and now it's Gabe and he's like, I'm, I'm going to go make money with this because I love chocolate chip cookies. Um, and so... I wanted to have that vibe of, of it being, uh, you know, around forever. And then I also wanted to have a welcoming homey vibe, right? So hence the script with some of the, the curves. And then I wanted it to have, a, you know, a homemade-ness. Like, it, you know, yes, this is a company, but like this is from scratch. Like this is a from, from scratch thing. And you're going to love it when you taste a bite of it kind of situation. That's kind of where I was going in my head. Yeah, uh, you know, did it work? I don't know. We're not I, there yet. I definitely get that feeling. Definitely. Well, are you going to bring back the the other layer with the Cookies Co? I, I am. I'm oh, going to okay, do that perfect. next. Mm -hmm. I wasn't sure if you... This, trying to get the Scribble Scrabble put into place real fast. Mm -hmm. ah. Take your go. time. My God, it's only what taking I love too you about 10 this minutes is, is, to do this. Come on. That, that We're going to be doing this for 10 minutes? No, I mean, we've been doing it oh, for a I little bit longer, down. but no, you've been doing great. You've been doing amazing, but it, it would have taken me okay. two, three hours to sketch something like this to come up with um, an idea, it's, let alone. It's just a rough. It's just rough. So I will say, sorry, I keep interrupting. No, mind. this is great. This is, the, you know, we're um, having a normal ca casual conversation. It's it's totally normal. For sure. So when I now that I'm looking at this with this shape, I, I still love the shape. Uh, what I'm what I'm thinking though is there's other ways that you can think about how this should work with uh, all the other stuff and and by that I mean your with your uh, ligature uh, oh man the name the word just like left my brain that's all okay. the extra bits of the text right you know like, what say for instance right here on this on this B uh -huh. maybe I don't want it to go under. Maybe it should go over the top. And so this is what I love about being an iPad is like, okay, well, I like that, but um, 
maybe it needs to go over the top of it. So you can color that back in and then come back in here with the eraser tool and say, okay, maybe this shadow needs to go right here and that looks better, right? And so you can keep looking at those things and go, does it make sense for it to be here, here, whatever? And that's why I love it, this phase because I can tweak this and tweak this until I like it. I get it like I want it and I don't have to worry about, oh, I got to rebuild that, restack it, read blah, blah. Even with the new tools that are in Illustrator or whatever, if you're using that, um, it doesn't, it's just, to me, this feels quicker. And I okay. feel like for spacing, this needs some kind of tail on it. I'm just going to give it a little one. Um, that might not be the right fit, but for now, it's got to have something. It's, it's bugging me. Um, Honestly, that's why the sketch phase is so important, because you're supposed to solve yeah. these minor problems in, in, the, in this stage. It gives you the flexibility to do that. Um, I agree yep. with you. Like once you go and you digitize it, you should, you shouldn't be focusing on solving minor, you know, um, issues like that. So, or they're big issues that can be solved in the sketch phase that once you get to making it digital, you're just focusing on cleaning up the, the logo. And then once you clean up the logo, you're testing it out. And then we have a question in the chat about, you know, Oh, please um, yeah. ask away. Cause yeah. I can't keep track. So music is. Gestalt, if I said your name correctly, I am giving myself two stars, um, is asking in the chat, he's saying, once you have the logo and it's perfect, now you need to mock it up and use to, to really sell it to the client. Where do you go 100%. for mock-up asset stocks? Oh, man. Uh, you know what? I've learned a ton about that this year, too, because there's... There's so many. And like for me, I have bought a ton off creative market. I like place it. Uh, I think it's place it.net is a good one for quick mock-up stuff. Uh, if you get a membership to that, it's real affordable. And it's also a good place to do quick stuff for like coffee mugs and t-shirts and hoodies. And, and they have some really good ones. Um, but then my team, uh, the brand team daily finds like these super dope websites that have them. And there's, it's, it's almost like we need to curate a list. Uh, I don't have the names of those handy because I just kind of go to this list that we keep kind of keep running between us and, and just click on and try to find what I need. Um, but the two that I said, like creative market is a good one. And then place it.net is a good one. If any, any of the team wants to shout that out and chat for me, mm -hmm. uh, once, once the, one of the brand guys want to throw any, or the, you know, illustration team or any product, any guys, anybody on the whole company wants to throw some in the chat. I sure would appreciate it. Sounds like we, we should um, add a resource tab to our site and then people can just always have access to it. Jordan says he has the list. He can definitely provide it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He, he's the guy. Um, so there's this. I'm going to duplicate this, this text version again. And I'm just going to. Wait, you uh, skipped over sure. the fact that not only do what? we purchase mock-ups, but you have also <laughs> ran a whole photo shoot. Come on, Mike. It's too humble. What are you I talking about? I, I don't even know what you're talking about. I can't about. with you, Mike. You're too humble. What? I love what it. What is the problem? What? You got to explain. What are you talking so, about? <laughs> you got to explain. Come on. Tell everybody on stream uh, what you ended up doing yesterday. Come on. This is great. great I just do no it's, To me, that feels normal. Like, you just kind of, like, if you don't find, this is the, all right, here's the, here's the deal. If you can't find a mock-up you like, right, you, you scour the web nothing's fitting the project you really want to showcase go make your own right go get hire a photographer or find a buddy that can shoot the pictures for you go out on scene like get the get the product you're building for go set it up shoot the product the actual product build your own mock-up on top of that if you need to or have it printed ahead of time um you know i mean i literally went out and I, i'm not going to show it but i went out and i had hats made for the shoot that was on yesterday so when we actually took the pictures it was already i didn't have to mock up the hat and it didn't have to look like a mock-up it was just like a real hat that we shot pictures of so it makes the authenticity of the what you're trying to do just better in my opinion so like you could try that too if you wanted we go um, above and like beyond for our clients so and that's something you kind of brought to the table, Mike. So I, I really, really hope that you you know that there is value in, 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 in what you bring to the team. And I love how 
you know, it's, it's, it's great. Using mock-ups are amazing, but sometimes mock-ups, because a lot of people, especially the popular ones, it's just going to look like your, your, the logo just looks like any other one just because the mock-up is so familiar. But if you go out there and you get creative and have some fun, take some pictures, um, I, I, I think that that's a big deal. Uh, and uh, Mike, I don't know how comfortable uh, you're, sh uh, how comfortable you are sharing this story, but I, I would love to talk about like your pop art little figurine on, on your desk, because that was a kind of a way of like creating <laughs> a mock-up, right? Of like I work mean, that you've done, yeah. right? So, um, so that's something that is interesting. Do you want to sure. share a little bit about I that? I could show it. Yeah. Let me erase this one bit for I forget. And I will, uh, I'll share it. Sure. <laughs> so I, Tuesday, this past Tuesday was my birthday and I turned 45 and happy birthday. When I thank thank you. When I turned 40, I was on the creative South. We were on the bridge for creative South and a buddy of mine came up to me and he said, Hey, I, I, I made you something for your birthday. Uh, I was like, Oh man, you like one to do that for someone is, is really cool. But, to not have uh, a reason to do it. Like, there's no reason for that. He's just, just like, I want to do it. So I was like, okay, cool. So he he, he hands me a, a bag and, and I pull out the bag and I don't know if anybody collects these, but I thought this was cool because like I have the only one of these and he hands me this. Look at that. And I was like, you know what? That's that's dope I, that takes a lot of work he reconstructed this entire packaging and sculpted the beard and hand painted it and all that and now bring I it up a own, little bit mike bring it up just a little there you own, go perfect yes you know, pop, look at that socket guy i like pop i thought it was cool anyway yeah much appreciated and i keep that on on my uh beside my desk so anyway Anyway, Back to Gabe's what? Cookies. that's a lot of work. So yeah, they <laughs> no, deconstructed it is. It. I didn't mean to take it lightly. No, it, it was, it's great. very, it means a lot to me. I just, so I imagine, imagine like if you're working with a mm. client, you're working with a client and you go above and beyond and you create that packaging for them so that it can look realistic. I think that is going to leave an impact and it's left an impact with you for five years. Right. And then some like you will oh, always yeah. forever um forever remember that you know the impact of this gift um and that that's kind of that is the that's the value that we provide to our clients you know that is the impact that we have on our clients whenever we're working with them and i, I want people to know that so that they know that when you're working with unfold you, you are getting that buddy buddy uh treatment you're we're treating you like family the same way that we are a family um so, so that's what we want. That's uh, the impression that we want to leave. That's that that our clients can leave on their customers and their users, and that that can be not just for today, but it's a long-lasting feeling. That's right. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna give you a time check. We have 15 minutes. Any chance we can switch to yep. Figma? Do you yep. think we can do that? Do All right. Sure. Let's do it. Um, so I'm just going to airdrop this to myself, okay. um, but I'm going to go ahead and swap out of, I'm like, I'm going to close down, uh, whoops. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, iPad, do what I need you to do. There we go. Uh, stop mirroring. Damn. Oh, I can see myself and you now. That's Yay. awesome. Let me know when All you're right. only... Uh, sharing figma by itself actually you know what you don't have to do anything sure, i'll sure. just i will do some magic on my end you're good all right i'm I just see, taking I this JPEG into, <laughs> yeah i wanted to make sure that they saw it um i'm gonna just transfer it. this over to Bo on our team actually created icons for everybody on the team that's similar to this one so Bo, thank you so much this was great Well. Jordan's great. He Jordan just put in the chat a couple of uh, resources for mock-ups. So thank you, Jordan, for doing that. Appreciate it. One of these has got to go to 
my machine. Not bad. Um, for everyone who has joined us, Mike right now is is basically he just finished sketching um, the logo that he built, the logo badge that he built in Procreate. He ah. is <laughs> sending it to his machine, and then from the from from his computer, he's gonna put it into uh, Figma, and then in Figma, we're going to vectorize it. Oh, I got it already. Okay. Oh, there's a Jordan says there's a plugin pro, uh, a plugin for Procreate for Figma to import the file. Well, thank you, Jordan, <laughs> for that bit of information. I appreciate that, brother. Yeah, you know, I did not know that. Um, I think I may, yeah, I don't even think I knew that was a thing. There's a lot of so, plugins for Figma. I think yeah. one, that's one of the reasons why we love it so much. All right, I'm gonna Bo. minimize. Hey, Bo, Bo, no, I'm just gonna make this smaller. Hey, hey, Bo, how's it going? Okay, so I I get messed with a good bit because I always import stuff and I, my stuff's always bigger than it needs to be in Figma and I forget that I don't have to work ginormous anymore. It, you can make it, you can size things down and still work real small as Vector, so you don't need to have it fill in the screen, but hey, it's, it's an eye issue, so just let it ride. So when I bring this stuff in, uh, and I know there's a lot of other work to do, but like the concentration for now is like, I like the type. I like the way the type turned out and looks sharp. So what I want to do is um, bring this in just like that and use it as my base layer and just use the pen tool to build on top of it. And so. Okay. Uh, I'm still waiting for you. I'm still waiting for you to say, I'm going to draw a circle and then I draw another circle and then I'm going to mess around with that circle until it looks like the shape of the letter. But you're going to use <laughs> the pen tool. I'm not going to do that at all. Oh, oh my yeah. God. Heart attack. But We're okay. just going to build it. I'm going to, I'm going to show you the quick method that Bob Ewing taught me that I learned from him and Ade Hogue and several other guys. Uh, it's the clock method and, and it works wonders for building type, like hand letter type quickly. And so I want to fade this back. What did uh, you call it? The clock so method? The clock method, yeah. Okay, interesting. So I we're curious. just going to push this opacity back. And again, I'm new in Figma, so I'm pretty sure there's a way to lock this down. But we're just going to leave it like it is and, and yeah, build on top of it because I can't remember how to do it the other way. So. <laughs> We're just going to zoom in on any, any of the letter forms. And so think about it like this. Uh, and I, I, I'm assuming you guys can see everything I'm doing, but yes. there's guides that you can pull for your letters. You can do this if you want. I'm going to do it by, by, by eyeball on it. But there's basically wherever the letter curves to where is where you want to put a point. So if, if a, a straight or horizontal line, vertical or horizontal line can touch those letters on the sides, or any in any place, you could pull a guide where it touches. That's where a point needs to go. And then you want to try to have as least amount of points as you can, right? So like for G, I'm just pulling these these in here as reference guides just for this example. But again, like I said, I'm going to probably just eyeball most of them, uh, just so I know, you know, just so you can kind of see what works. So there are some guides for the G. Um, this takes forever because you've got to do this for every letter and the longer the word the more got you know you get the idea but it works and i would probably build several shapes so like most people might go in here and they might just click and then click and you know drag a point like this right yes I, you can do it that way but it's going to get real messy real quick and there's there's reasons why you shouldn't do it that way uh in case you have to move different parts of letters so um let me go into the team is telling you to lock the layer if you want on the left. Oh, you guys are the best. Thank you, team. <laughs> that way it's not, it doesn't keep right. moving. Yeah, you're good. Uh, so what I would probably do first is this, this curvy part of the G I'm probably just going to put a point here. I'm going to pull a point right about here. One here. I'm going to come up into this area because I know this part of that letter form comes into this letter, form, the other half. I'm just going to cap it. I'm going to pull a point here. One right there. 
One right here. How do you Probably know where here. to put your points? That's so cool. One on the I so like I'm eyeballing a bunch of stuff because I know where those like guides should fall. Mm. So basically, where this curve meets meets this straight line, this this guide I pulled, that's where the point needs to go. Does that make sense? Okay. Yeah. Can they see my guides? I don't yes. know. Can they see the guides on the screen? They okay. can see everything so, that you're doing. Okay, I'm just making sure. So basically, I know it's like, oh, look at this ugly letter form. So, yeah, it's awful. But <laughs> there's the bend tool. You can click on the bend tool, and then you can come back here and click on all the points, and it's just basically going to add your handles back in there. And so you don't have to to do that manually. But what is it's making the letters ugly? I know. Um, and I don't only do. You don't have to do all of them, but do most of the ones you're going to use. So now it's starting to shape up a little bit more like the letter G that we're trying to make, right? Mm -hmm. So what I do now is you'll double click into that to get your show your points again. And you're going to click on each one. And what you want to do is you want to try to do as many horizontal or vertical. You want to pull everything horizontal and vertically. So everything has an order. It's not like all random angles of of handles so like i had to hold shift down bring this one back to the top my daughter's calling me i apologize oh, it's okay Stop. okay and then it's uh it's that time of day you know school's letting out and whatnot uh, she's a nurse so she's finishing clinicals today i'm sure oh congratulations All right. that's awesome yeah yeah she graduates in may we're super i mean proud. If, if you want to take a second um, if it's emergency feel free to do that Oh, it's not an emergency. It's hey, where? What are you doing for snacks? Oh. Or what are you do? like? It's some. Did you take the dog out? It's gonna be something like that. It's like, oh, I you're working. That. Yeah, I'm working. That's cute. So, um, you know, you wanna you wanna get the point as close as you can. And so, to move individual points, you wanna hold down the option key if you're on a Mac, and you can just move individually individual points and kind of get it to match you want to start matching the the bit and i'm going to turn this line weight down to like 0.125 just so it's a little bit easier to see what i'm doing do me a favor um, can you zoom I'm in on that yes ma'am so we yes ma'am yeah yeah is that Perfect. better y'all yeah this is great okay cool and so the with the think about it like this so the clock method is is this is the easiest way to showcase that if you're um if you take a circle and you draw a circle and then you double click into that circle to show all the handles. Mm -hmm. It's like, there's the clock. See the clock? Oh, yeah. And you see how all the handles are pulled evenly between curves. So if this point, the curve between this point and this point, and I'll zoom in on this, this circle, the curve on it's in between the two points to make it an even curve. You want these handles right here and right here to be pulled equal distance from those two points. And that's going to make that nice, smooth curve. So when you're building out any letter form, try to think of every curve you work on, you're going to pull those two handles in to kind of be as even as you can get them to match up. So when I'm working on the G up here, right? And this is all crazy town. Um, I want to click on this point. I want to hold shift down and make it go um, to snap to horizontal. And so I want to bring this curve back to where it should be. I'm just going to hold shift down and bring that point. Hold the com, com, control, option key. Sorry. Oh my gosh, y'all. <laughs> huh. Okay. We're just going to bring it in. So you see how it's starting to match up what I drew? Mm -hmm. Right. And so this handle has been pulled way far right. And this handle is, is not high enough. So you want those two to match. So you want to take this one. You want to bring it in. Oh wow! Right, and you want to you want to start working these till they till they feel like they're making the curve that it's supposed to be there. It's not always going to match your drawing, so you can move your points however you want. Okay, um, I would probably end up taking this one out a little bit to really try to get these to match the best I can to get that nice curve right there. And then I would bring this one in a little more. And then when I turn this to snap, see how it's starting to it's starting to make the letter that I made. Yep. And you start you start messing with these handles enough to kind of get the spacing in this gap and this gap even. Um, you're going to have a nice rounded curve for the letter G. And I know you're like, oh, this takes forever. It it does, but it's only taking forever because I'm talking about it. If I was just doing this on the fly, we would have had G built already, and uh, you know, just do what you got to do. But this is amazing. You know, bring this up some. Bring this one in some. 
and now your G is starting to really shape up. So it, the more you do this, the the quicker your letters will come together. And so I know I want this to kind of come up through here instead and make a nice curve there. This one doesn't matter so much because it's internal. It's inside of this other letter, this other piece of the letter. Mm -hmm. So what I like to do here is just bring this point as close as I can get it. And I usually turn it down to match the angle of whatever I need it to match. Um, and then I'll see how now it's like yes. it goes with the line. Oh, my God. Um, and then, you know, bring this out a little bit. And Only you would wait until the that, end of the stream to, to give us the best of the stream. <laughs> the, the good stuff? The good My stuff. My bad, y'all. I thought the sketching was important. No, the sketching is I amazing. I think it's important. It's so cool. But I think everybody's mind is like blown right now because this is such a an easy way and such a clean way. Because, you know, we play around with handles. But we I've never yeah. seen it where it's like nice and clean like this. So how did you do the corners? The corners for what like right here uh the yes that little corner for the g yeah the inside uh-huh so they're 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 perpendicular but it, it you play with it till you get it like you need it right so uh -huh. that line the line won't matter so if it does that wonky little bit where yep. it makes a weird point you're not going to have that line on there anyway but what i like to do is try to for this little tiny piece try to get it close to the edge and really just use this particular handle to worry about that curve Wow. To get the curve like you want it. And then on this one, you're just trying to match what has to go up right here. You want these two, even though it's not perpendicular, you know, I can bring it down here and maybe bring it out a little bit and I'd probably move this one back in just a hair. Wow. And so now you kind of got it like you want. I need this to come up just because I see and like my sketch really comes up right here. So I need to take this and bring it like there because that's starting to feel right. And I'll probably push it out just a hair. And I would turn this one down to match the line that it's on. So it goes in line with that stroke. And so you've built this nice G curve in, in Figma. And now you want to go to the next piece. So you're going to be done with that one. You know, des deselect it. Go to your pen tool again. And now you're going to do the exact same thing but with this piece. You're going to um, pull everything where there's a point. You need to pull it. So there's going to be one there and there and there and my, right back there what can i get like 15 more minutes of your time so you can kind of like oh i'm the good shape yeah, we'll, okay, we'll, yeah we'll, keep we'll keep going because this is looking um, awesome yeah thank you so much thanks and so i'm doing the same thing with this this shape right we're gonna we're gonna come back in here with the whatever this tool is called the bend tool yeah and give your you know add your handles to your shape and, and it's already looking awful which you're it's gonna it's going to do that. You have to be able to see this. Mm -hmm. And I, for some reason, I guarantee I did not connect this up here. I yeah, have a that awfulness. Oh, that's that's <sighs> complete garbage. Sorry. No, no, you're good. I, I have mean, a question. Does it Maybe do that? Does it connect can... when I do that? Oh, it does. Oh, look at that. How cool. You can snap points in this thing. That's huge. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, I learned something new. I love it. Sweet. Let's go. Your reactions All are right. the best. Well, Rob, I, I, you know, mm -hmm. go ahead. Robin in the chat is, is asking, why did you decide? Up, Rob, Rob, you know, Rob, Rob, what's up, Rob? Uh, oh, it's Rob. It's Rob. Yes. What up, Rob? <laughs> He's asking, why did you decide? Um, oh, One second. He said, question for Mike, jumping ahead. Is there a reason why you didn't put um, additional points for the rest of the G versus adding it inside? You're talking about for this piece I'm working on now? Yeah, like why did you decide to create yeah. two shapes instead of just one singular shape? That's a great question. So mm -hmm. let's say that I've got this other shape finished, right? Okay. And it's it looks like it should. And then this G is separate and it looks like it should. Well, if I had built it all as one shape, then the G, the G is now a G. There's nothing I can do to mess with it. But if I've got them separated and... This piece is too close to the A, or it's not close enough inside the G. Oh. And now can I can move it where I want it to kind of make the letter a little different way. And if they're connected or one single shape, that shape is finite. Instead of now I'm, I'm able to edit this, this one shape to like do what I want it to do. And those curves don't mess with these curves, right? So mm -hmm. if I had had this shape connected right here and I went and I changed this curve, this curve would change automatically. That curve would change automatically. Okay. 
this prevents all those curves having to be reworked over and over and over again. So you're doing less work by doing two shakes than you would be if you built one. So um, my, that sense? yeah, my assumption, you would do that for all the rest of the shapes. So like any, maybe hundred percent the way your stroke goes down, that's one shape. If it goes up, yep. it's another, if it goes down. Yep. Okay. Okay. And the only, and then once you're done doing all of that, you'll copy and paste that to an, another, you'll, you'll start a new one. You'll combine all the letter forms to single, single letters. You'll work on the kerning, how you want it. And then you'll take all that combine I mean, dupl duplicate it again combine it all into one letter one one word one logo type and then you can move it around and that's when you start building the shapes around it and the little elements and all the little accoutrements that go with the, the badge does that make sense yeah absolutely thanks okay. rob that was so, a great question that was a great question dude thanks so for this particular one it's a little a little more fun with this um when we have um I have less points and i didn't put any points going down the side i don't know if y'all noticed that because when you have this kind of point you really can make this curve with two points. You pull one in like this and you pull this one out going out the other direction and you push this one in going this direction. And now you've got this nice S curve built with two points instead of four or five like most people would do. Wow. Does that make sense? Less is more. Less is definitely, you. your letter forms need to have as less points as you can give them. Okay. At least that's the way that I was taught from, like I said, several other designers who are way better at this than I am. I um, believe, and, and people can correct me one. if I'm wrong in the chat. Uh, I believe it's it's good. Less is more for points even for processing as well if you're creating a typeface. that I, This could be oh, a myth, yeah. but I think there is there is merit to that statement. Um, I'll also say the other reason I did this too, Rob, uh, and made them separately is because even though this is hand lettered, I still want it to have some kind of like, I don't know, real letter feel. So everything kind of has its own weight and it all looks the same, like the weight's the same on everything. And so the other reason I did this is because now I can take this shape, I can move it over here to the, you know, the, the width of both of them, right? Uh -huh. I can turn this to, to make sure that like, okay, how close was I? Oh, wow. You know? Yeah. I'm close enough. So. I can match that up and make sure that my widths are pretty even. Yeah. I'm a product designer. I'm sitting here looking at pixels, grabbing a rectangle, putting it on it, and then dragging that rectangle, taking it to the other side. You, you just simplified it. That's awesome. Thanks. And you could do that. You could do that way, but. No, this is just a hack. That's I awesome. think you do what works best for your situation. Mm -hmm. So. I don't know. I'm all right. I'm, I'm kind of happy with the way this is okay. I, I don't like this curve here at all. So I, I feel like it needs to, like, it's just not right. Like this part's not right. This actually needs to be probably be over more. And that needs to be a little more fuller. And then I probably push that in just a hair and more, you know, whatever. more awesome that questions works. from the chat guys. Uh, feel free to. Oh, ask here we go. <laughs> no, no, not yet. Not yet. Mike. I'll be coming up with questions shortly. <laughs> okay. So there's the G. I think that works. Um, and then, and now it's, 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 there's so many little tricks from here that you can do to make it a little quicker. But um, if you wanted to keep this as your angle for the rest of your letter forms, you could take this as your base and copy and paste it and pull, you know, maybe my A needs to be like that. Maybe my B needs to go to that, you know, that same angle, et cetera, et cetera. That's probably what I would do as far as keeping that as an, as an, you know, a Consistent. base mm -hmm. angle, mm -hmm. you know, but you also could just pull guides if you want to just pull guides and then use one guide to, um, use one guide to, uh, do all that. And so maybe the angle is this and you want to use that as a, as a guide and and it, one of my colleagues please let me know is there a way to make that a guide because <laughs> i don't know if that's the thing uh gabe is saying he's not, his name has never looked better whatever dude <laughs> i agree with him <laughs> i'll take it he's on point I'll take it. <laughs> um so anyway for the, okay let's do let's do let me get out of this this one piece let's do this for the a so for the a you're gonna it's the same kind of situation, right? 
wherever the curve meets where a actual guide would be, right? So if this mm -hmm. was where the guide would be, you want to pull a point there. So, you know, here, there's going to be one right around here, here. We're going to come here, 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 here. And bam, there's your base. That's the base of your A, right? Mm -hmm. Easy, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. And then same for your, for your, your back piece, the, the downstroke. You want to kind of guess where this stuff should go. Yeah. So it looks like an A. It's just like a Greek A. <laughs> oh, my God. I don't know. Maybe not. Mm -hmm. um, and then you, again, double click into it. And you use the bend tool to get your points um, put back into these forms. Do, 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 do. Somebody asked me something. This feels weird. <laughs> no, keep talking. Um, keep talking. Keep doing what you're doing. Exactly. Keep, like <laughs> keep talking, right? I, you know, uh, David was saying that it's really hard to work and talk at the same time, um, and I, I agree, I agree with him. I agree with him. I, I can ask a bunch of questions. I'm just, I'm just so mind blown with oh, yeah. how easy it is for you to do the stuff that you're doing right now. Um, um, but yeah. Yeah, so so I I'm thinking a little bit more uh you know about use in the future, right? So negative space, sure. the use of negative space, what is this going to look like? Um do you do you account for what it's going to look like maybe at an inch or would this logo never be that small? What are some of the things that you take that, into consideration? Yeah. I think it depends on the industry, right? Like, mm -hmm. you know, because I'm, I love like vintage and I love food and I love like this kind of work, especially if it's like built on a label, like there's going to be use cases where you don't need to make it smaller than a certain size, but all that gets put into the brief ahead. Like you would have already gotten that information ahead of time in a brief that was, here's where you, the use case is for. And if you didn't have that information ahead of time, that's, it's your job as the designer to go get it. Right. So go back to the client and go, Hey, you know, I know this is the direction you want me to take, but is there going to be any instances when X, Y, Z is going to happen? Because if, if so, we need to think of a secondary mark. that's going to be, uh, you know, it's going to allow yeah. this script version to be responsive on web, mobile, whatever, whatever. Mm -hmm. It might only work in a few instances for all your clothing and your big signs, but maybe we just need to have a cookie icon that represents your, your brand at a, a mobile or a web, you know, for the mobile or web experience. And so that's where that suite gets get comes into play. Now, now you're not just building a logo and a badge. You're building a whole suite of things to like make this brand really pop across all platforms. Does yeah. that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. And I think we've done that before for a few of our clients, which is, is super important because you still have the essence of the mark, too. right? You still, it, oh yeah, you still have yeah, the yeah. essence. You're just adapting it to whatever platform it needs to be. It needs to live on. Um, so I'm envisioning Agreed. this uh, on the packaging of the cookie, possibly on mm -hmm. some merch, you know, shirts, aprons. aprons yep. Um, yep. Hats. I love that. I think that that yep. it would work beautifully. I like that it has character. I like that it's easily identifiable from afar or from close. Um, so s these are things that you're trying to kind of um, control in the sketch phase, which is what you were talking about. I, I want to yep. ask you a question though. Do you feel like you've created Shoot. your own style and how do you <laughs> differentiate That's the logos, especially if they're like logo badges, how do you m make sure each one is your style, but at the same time different so that it could represent the brand really nicely? I don't right. know. I, I, I mean, yeah, I think people are going to go, you, you can see my letter work and go, okay, that's, that's become kind of the way that I write and the way that I draw letters and stuff for certain types of things. I think it, it, when that is the case, you really just need to make certain that in your sketch phase, you are really trying to explore all the options of every letter form. So when somebody does look at it, they, they recognize like there's, there's a, my letter S I guarantee if you see it, it's going to look like, like you're going to notice this, my letter. Uh -huh. That's just one of the letters that I know that like, as I have, it's, it's, if you see a certain tail style, you'll go, okay, I think that's, you could might see that some, some style there that is my own that I've kind of put into my work.
but I try not to do that every single time. And I try to really think through like every little instance of how this letter form could look and how do we make it different. But, you know, obviously this is on the fly in, in an hour and, mm -hmm. you know, I'm sure it looks Something. like a million other things I've drawn, but yeah. that's just how I like to draw, you know? And mm -hmm. so you're also, you've also hired me at, because you like my style, right? So at that point, you know, I don't know if that makes any sense, but like you Thanks. just do your best to, to not make them all look the same. Yeah. Is the simplest answer I can give. No, that's excellent. I think that that is absolutely valid. I do want to be respectful of your time. I know you have a lot of work to do today. So that's, I... That's a great... <laughs> I think what you've shown us today has been wonderful. Um, possibly offline, you can kind of wrap this up into a badge and we can share it on our social media. So everybody, please make sure that you're following our Twitter, our Instagram. We'll, we'll make sure to showcase the final result on our, our social media. So if you're following us, you will definitely get to see the end product. Um, Mike, I want to I want to use this time, just the last couple of minutes that we have you here to ask you a sure. couple of questions. I know Creative South is coming yeah. up very quickly. I'm so excited. 40 days. 40, 40 days. days oh, my goodness. Let's go. Tell us a little bit now. about Creative South this year. Tell us, you know, where can people find tickets? What the, can they expect? Maybe share some some of that. And um, sure. I'm going to just show showcase you and I now on the screen so you don't have to continue to work. That way people can see your face oh. as you're sharing creative stuff. Hey, before you do real quick, before just I do. so yes. I, I'm very, yeah, yes. real. When you do this, mm -hmm. the reason you're building them like this, I just want to be clarify. Yes. So now that I've had this a, now I can adjust the, the kerning uh, between letter forms. So I just want to bring that home and I then I'll it. stop. No, this is great. Thank you, Mike. Cool. This so awesome. it's, and, oh, so you see what the G looks like. Uh, like, mm -hmm. like it should look, we'll turn the line off and add a fill and make it black. And that is what wow. the letter G looks like. You're awesome, Finished. Mike. So. I appreciate Yay. it. Yay. Sorry. I didn't get it all built y'all, but no, I tried. This is great. <laughs> no, this was wonderful. I love it. It's amazing. Thank you so much. I've learned so much. I mean, you know, the sketch, when we're sketching, you have to, <coughs> excuse me, you have to train your hand, right? It's like muscle memory. But then seeing how you digitize it, I've learned so much. I've learned so much. Thank you so much for sharing your knowledge. Um, You're welcome. Okay, so back to Creative South. Tell us a little bit about Creative South. Tell us uh, about what can we expect this year? Where can people find some tickets? Um, what are you most excited about? What is the theme this year? Um, you want me to stop sharing? You're good. You're good. You don't have to worry about anything. I just You can just look at the camera. Okay, cool, cool. I can't. Uh, oh, that's not how I wanted to do that. All right. Okay. I'm just there. Yeah. Perfect. I like it there. I'm good. Okay. <laughs> Repeat the question. I apologize. You're good. You're good. Creative South. <laughs> Creative 40 South. days. Yeah. Super excited. Let's talk about theme. <laughs> Let's talk about what you're excited about. Tell us about okay. what, where can people find some tickets? Super excited. Sure. Uh, Creative Sauce March the 30th through April 1st this year. So like, yeah, it's 40 days from now. We have a great lineup. Um, we tried our best this year to have all new people that have never been on our stage before uh, come come speak um, about a variety of topics. And we have, I think, nine workshops that are available if you want to get some good learning in and, and, and as, long, as well as fellowship. Um, Tickets are on sale at creativesouth.com. You can go get them. You can read all about all the, the 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 bios of everyone, their workshop talk descriptions, their talk descriptions. All those things are there. Um, I don't know. Like, th here's the, the the way I can describe it. If you've never been to Creative South, mm -hmm. it's like it's like going to your grandma's house for Sunday supper, right? And she comes out and she hugs your neck, she prays over you, and then like you get to eat lunch for three days with like eight hundred of your cousins, right? And talk shop. So it's, it's kind of that vibe or some of have equated to like summer camp that you don't want to leave. Uh, it's just a good time of fellowship. I don't really uh, like networking to me is, is a kind of an older term that I don't like to use. Like I, if I want to learn about you, I can go online and learn about anybody's work, but I want people to build relationships. So I want you to come to the event with that in mind of like, I'm not here to just trade cards and stickers and just be like, Hey, how's it going? I, I'm trying to get you guys to, have more FaceTime and have a deeper connection so that when that instance comes up where 
you have a cool project and you met this guy or girl or whatever, you met these folks at Creative South to, that have this certain skill set and you got to know them on a deeper level, like, oh man, let's call so and so up and let's rock this project out together. And like everybody's starting to collaborate like that. And I think it's an it's it's huge to be able to come to a place like this, have your screen not in front of you, have the person in front of you, and just have good conversation and fellowship. And so and I want people to leave inspired to go do those things. And I want them to have a touch of Southern hospitality. Like I want to feed you well. I want you to feel loved on and I want you to leave there going, I can't wait to come back next year. So that's the quick vibe of, of how that, that works. And I'm looking forward to it. It's kind of the start of my year. It gets me recharged to go create after that. And I hope it does the same for all of you guys. Um, Are we having Ink Wars this year? I don't know. Ink Wars is going to be on the bridge party. Yeah, nice. we, we kick off our, our our event every year with a nice party over the over the river. Can people and still I apply? Ink Wars, I don't know if we have it on the website, but if you want to try to apply it, let me know. I'll pass it on to Jason Craig, and okay. he and uh, Lenny are kind of working through it. Uh, nice. Actually, Jason's doing all of it this year. Yeah, Jason's doing that part. So hit me up, and I'll make sure that you you get in front of him for at least a, a, good, a good look. And uh, I think this year, so the theme this year is pure imagination, which is kind of like Willy Wonka-esque. And so I saw the stickers came in. I was telling telling the team a little bit ago that the stickers came in, and it's probably my favorite set of stickers that we've had yet. I like love it. The colorways, like like it's. I'm definitely putting one on my laptop for sure. Nice. But um, it's gonna be fun like that, and I think that theme will carry through this. You know, like it always does. Probably not to the extent because we're in a new venue this year, so that will be a little different. But I think people will enjoy it and uh, appreciate it, and uh, it'll allow us to grow a little bit. And, that's kind of the I love nutshell it. of Creative South. We designed the website and it's fire. It is the most it is fire. beautiful site I've ever seen. And then Shauna in the chat is saying she's hosting the Drink and Draw. So make sure yes. that you participate in that. So excited. Please do. Um, it's super fun. The way I think of Creative South is um, it's a family reunion every year for me. That's my That's opinion. It. That's it. And it's a three-day design party nonstop. I think I get maybe three hours of sleep every <laughs> every day uh, while I'm out there. So, <laughs> and I need like two <laughs> weeks of recovery, but... Please, please, please um, feel free to, I uh, put the link in our chat. Uh, go ahead, grab your ticket. If you want to participate in anything and you can't find access to it, reach out to Mike. Um, Mike, where can people find you? How can people reach you on the interwebs? Sure. So in the phone book, I'm in the J's. Oh my God, I can't. No All right. Way. And you just, you go, oh, it's a, it's a big book. If you've never seen one, you flip it. And you have to flip oh. the pages and then you find my name in alphabetical order and my home phone number with my landline oh, with the little thing, you, you it will ring line. that. <laughs> and you don't have a landline? No. I'm kidding. <laughs> so, look, so look, you can just hit me up on Instagram, Twitter, whatever, dude, at Bucket826. I'm on, I'm on all the things. Um, it's set for like Snap Face and um, whatever that other one is. Who cares? No, I'm serious. Like Instagram, Twitter. Call me on the phone, email me, you know, carry your pigeon, whatever works for you. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much, Mike. Dinner menu. You're awesome. I'm really looking forward to seeing you at Creative <laughs> South in person and hopefully for one sure. day come join you at the cabin. Um, Let's go. Tea time will resume in two weeks. Uh, we have three more sessions every two weeks uh, up until Creative South. Please make nice. sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us on our all of our social medias. Mike today will wrap up the logo and we'll post it on there. Thank you so much, everyone in the chat and everyone who Appreciate asked questions. We will see you in two weeks. Have a good one. Take care. Bye-bye. That's it. See you guys.